Hi, this is James from Tabletop Gaming Guild, and today we're going to take a look at Avalon, which is this going to be the big box edition for Avalon. This is published by Indie Boards and Cards, and this will play between 5 and 10 players. Now, you may have played Avalon in the past, which is a version of Resistance, so if you play Resistance or Avalon, then you're going to be at home with this game. This is basically going to be like a remastered version of Avalon. It's going to have all the base game stuff in there with new art. And it's going to have all the expansions from the Resistance in this game, along with some new characters. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you all that comes in with this big box edition. And just basically how to play the game. And then we're going to come back and I'm going to give you my final thoughts. <music> All right, this is what you're going to get with Avalon Big Box Edition. This is a massive amount of content, especially for a box that's like this. This is like the perfect size box. There is no like extra airspace in this box. They gave you so much stuff with this. This is Avalon, the game. However, it, all co it comes with every uh, Resistance expansion that was ever made, and it has some special characters that are just in this box and you don't need anything else to play avalon everything in here is what's required to play the game now there are you don't have to use the expansions in this game at all there's a whole bunch of additional content in here to be used with the expansion so as you explore the game you can keep uh, adding in the different expansions that you like or removing them the Lady of the Lake token will let you uh, look at your opponent to sit, determine um, what side they're on. So the loyalty of that op opponent, which is really, really powerful. Uh, then that is a module that you can play with that will have it in there. And you have these watch tokens. And these are your uh, rogue tokens. So these are your voting tokens. One side has a pass, one side has a fail. Uh, this is Excalibur, which allows you to change some of the results are one of the results in the uh, when you're performing a quest so uh, if you use Excalibur you can change someone's uh, card so if you think that guy's a traitor you'll be like nah uh, we're gonna play the other card that you didn't put in so that's pretty cool uh, you also have these good and evil tokens here and these are all expansion things by the way so I'm just going through a couple different things that you can have uh, these are your team tokens here um, you also have more of the characters in here, which I can go over in a second. And you have a bazillion character tokens that you can use throughout the game in one of the expansions. So there's, there's so many character tokens. We're going to go over some of the characters in here, but there's some specialized decks too. Um, this deck here entirely, I believe, is for the expansion. Uh, just make sure you don't run into some of the uh, success and failure cards because there needs to be Let's see if they're in here. Yeah, these guys You need these guys separate. Okay, so And I'm not really going over what each of these things are I'm just showing you some of the like massive amount of content you have Here's some magic cards that you can use for an expansion that are pretty cool Here's some rogue cards. This is rogue pass rogue fail rogue success. I mean and rogue fail these are the the uh, messenger fail, messenger success, all sorts of really cool stuff there. And we also have plot cards in this for the expansion. So these plot cards are really fun to play with. And this guy, this game can play up to huge player counts, which is also amazing. So these are your plot cards. And that's in another expansion. And we might do a video where we go over each of these. Right here, these are really cool. These are your uh, allegiance cards. So basically, they have this really cool dragon picture on the one side, but when you flip them over, some of these will switch your allegiance. So some of them are blank. So you don't know what might happen. So let's go over what you get with the base game here, what you need for the base game. You're going to need these. You're going to need character cards. And now some of these character cards are for expansions. You also need these success and failure tokens here that you're going to put on the boards. 
and this is going to be your round marker and this is your um, vote marker vote track marker uh, you're going to have player aid cards which are really nice because they have all of the different characters on it so at a glance you will know uh, you're going to need these uh, vote tokens here and these cards so how do you play this game well first off you're going to look at your player count and out of these boards here select the correct player count so if i'm playing five players this one's this six players here eight players nine players ten players and seven players so if i'm playing like a six player game i'll get this one here all right then i'm going to place this one here on the well we're going to put these tokens off the side they're double-sided so here's assess and fail so we'll put these off to the side because these are going to be quest one through five and we're going to go ahead and place the round marker here and then we're going to go ahead and place the vote track mon uh, marker there at the start of the game, you're going to randomly assign someone this king token. You're also going to decide what characters you're going to play with, and there are a lot. There, like there's this clerk, which secretly investigates the first leader. Then there's this brute, may, and again, these are expansion ones too. So uh, you want to keep a certain mix in there uh, most of the time. Brute uh, may fail only the quest, uh, the first three quests. Lancelot knows evil Lancelot or can switch alliance. We have Lancelot knows good Lancelot or can switch alliance. We have a loyal servant of Arthur. By the way, these are bad, these are good. And we'll go over that in a second. We have uh, this knight guy, uh, which is a minion of Mordred. I don't think it just doesn't do anything. That's an expansion. Uh, loyal servant of Arthur, another minion of Mordred. Loyal Servant Arthur, Minion Mortar, we'll go past those. Lunatic, most fail every quest. Loyal Servant of Arthur, Messenger may play an evil messenger. Uh, Merlin knows evil must remain hidden. That is an important one here. Uh, Mordred, unknown to Merlin. This is Junior Messenger, may play a good messenger. This is Mor Morgana, appears as Merlin. So she um, basically is going to pretend she's more Merlin. And uh, Senior Messenger knows Junior Messenger may play a good messenger. Uh, Oberon, unknown to evil, does not know evil. And we'll go over what that means in a second. Percival knows Merlin, which is important. Uh, revealer, uh, revealer um, uh, reveals loyalty after the second failed quest. Uh, rogue. Uh, may play a uh, rogue success. These are the rogues, by the way, so they have the special tokens. Uh, may uh, play rogue fail, unknown to evil, does not know evil. Then we have sorcerer, may play magic, which is, gets into those magic cards. Then, yep, sorcerer may play magic. Troublemaker uh, must lie about loyalty. We have a trickster here, uh, may lie about loyalty. An untrustworthy ser servant appears evil to Merlin, knows the assassin can become evil during the recruitment stage. This is the assassin. The assassin may activate assassination stage if three quests succeed. So, those are really important ones because we're going to get into how to play the game. So, at the beginning of the game, after you've decided which roles you're going to be playing with and you hand them out to the players, all the, the king is going to, and if he's not evil, he's going to, everyone's going to close their eyes. The king is going to say, okay, now all the evil players can open their eyes. So all the evil players can see who they are. Merlin can pretend he's evil and open his eyes and see who all the evil players are. Now this is important because the way to win the game is if you're the good guys, which there are more good guys than bad guys, there's a chart in the book that's going to tell you what the mix of good guys to bad guys are, but there's always more good guys. If the good guys have three successes, they win. If there's three failures, the bad guys win. 
The bad guys can also win if there's three successes. So let's say it went like this. After the fifth round, there's three successes. The bad guys can win if the assassin's in play and the assassin figures out who Merlin is and, and names that uh, character in that stage when the third one success is done. The other way the bad guys can win is how you do your quests. So let's go over that real quick. So how you're going to do your quest is you're going to have a captain. The captain is going to say a number. It can be anywhere between one and six, which would be all the players. The captain's going to pick which people are going on the quest. At that point, uh, players are going to take these tokens here. Let's move this off the side so you can see a little better. And they're going to secretly pick one. So it's going to, whoops, these are both approves. Grab a reject. So they can either pick approve or reject. So what's going to happen is we're going to throw some of these in there randomly. And they're going to shuffle these up and the captain's going to flip them over. So right now we have two rejects and four uh, proves. So that means there's more proves than rejects, so the quest will go through. If the quest failed, then you're going to move this vote tracker up and you're going to move the king to the person to the next person to the left. Then they're going to try to set up a quest. If this gets to five, the bad guys automatically win. So you have to be careful on how many of these quests you turn down. And again, there is more good people than bad. So theoretically, you should be having, not getting to this fifth one, but if the bad players do their job, it could work out. Um, so what's gonna happen then is each player throughout the game is gonna have one, these two cards. They're gonna have a fail and success. During a mission, the people who were selected will pick a fail or success. If they are a good player, they always have to select success. However, the bad player doesn't have to always do fail. They can do success if they want to hide. Uh, it might be a good idea on the first one when you're like, well, they found me, but I just, I'm going to put a success down and I'll flip success and they'll be, yay, we're all good guys. But, you know, are they? Uh, but if there's one fail in the quest, the quest is failed. And you put this token here. If and this will move up for the next one. You'll continue on. If all of them succeed, then you'll put a success on here. And again, the way to win the game is going to be good guys need to have three successes. Bad guys need to have three failures out of the five. If um, good guys have three um, successes and Merlin and the assassin are in the game, uh, especially the base game, they'll be there. Uh, then the assassin player has a chance to assassinate Merlin and if they do the bad guys win. So in a quick gist that's all the rules there are for the base game of Avalon and how, just basically how to play it really is what just a quick overview. There is so much content that you can add for the expansions like here's gameplay this game end. and and everything else here is going to be optional rules and all sorts of cool modules that you can add into the game there is a lot and there's a lot of content there is just so much stuff here this is like the ultimate edition of avalon which is what the intent was so let's go ahead back up to the table here and i'll give you my final thoughts on avalon big box edition <music> So if you love social deduction games or you love like the Resistance or the original Avalon, they're gonna probably love this game. This game is basically the quintessential complete edition of Avalon. It has really nice art in it and it has so many different modules and gameplay variants that you can do in this game that'll keep this alive and have tons of replayability. So if your get, group gets tired, of just playing like base Avalon, you can add these components in and or modules and have so much more play to the game. One thing I'll mention though is I really, really love those player tokens. Those tokens that show the characters, I use them all the time. I always place them out on the board so everyone knows what are the possibilities of characters in the game itself. And then they can look at that really nice reference sheet to see what each of the characters do. So 
I really like that. It's like a visual re uh, reminder of what is in the game. And I, like I said, I will always use those. And there's some really cool variants in this game too with the modules that are a lot of fun, like the Lady of the Lake or Scalibur Sword or using the Rogues. Just so much stuff. So basically, I mean, if you love Avalon and you're like, oh, there's some expansions I wanted to get, this is it. If you love Resistance and you're like, oh, there's some, but I like that medieval theme better, this is it. If you like social deduction games and you've never played Avalon before, I would highly recommend tra trying this out. A Avalon, like Resistance, has a different feel than, like, say, Werewolf or Mafia or those type of games. So definitely worth uh, a play. And like I said, if you like Avalon, this is like the edition you want. So that's my thoughts on it. Thank you for watching.